Well, you ready for your Christmas lecture? <clears throat> okay. I hope you're prepared. I got to turn one thing on, sorry. Okay. Is it working? All right. <clears throat> Hopefully, you had your protein shake today. All right. Well, Mary, you know, I don't feel like it's Christmas because it just seemed like <clears throat> we were in the spring. <laughs> summer went by. There was no summer. It's Christmas coming up, and I don't believe this, actually. <clears throat> so, diverse health services. We're going to take you on a journey today, so buckle up. <clears throat> this is going to be a unique story today, <clears throat> one I've been waiting 40 years to tell you. Where did I come from? We're going to know, <clears throat> you'll know a little bit more about my history today. Dr. Jeff is going to do a fantastic lecture on inflammation, the beginning of all disease, <clears throat> January 29th at the Novi Library. I can't ever get to the library. Jeff gets all the free lectures at the library. I got to pay an arm and a leg to be here. I can't ever get to lecture the library, the free spot, order pills. This place costs a fortune. <clears throat> How many virtual video patients flew in for the lecture today? Look around. Okay. Where'd you come from? Maine, where else? <laughs> Massachusetts, all right, where else? Miami, Miami. that's today, that was this afternoon, that was today. So, welcome. Did you enjoy your virtual video appointments? You know, I don't know how all this stuff works, but thank God Tony and a lot of other folks do. So, find us on Instagram, like us, help us survive after, you know, all the stuff we have to put up with. Please make us look, try to look good. We've been here busting our hearts forever. Subscribe on YouTube. A cognoscopy. What is a cognoscopy? It's an enema for your brain. <clears throat> you ready? <clears throat> We're going to go live at a special spot, but I'm going to... We're going to have a couple things we got to do first. Dr. Reedy, did you make it out there? The guy that fixed my teeth. I told him I would put up his card because he fixed my teeth Monday. He does a great job because I'd have been up here with a fang hanging out if he didn't fix it. <laughs> <clears throat> this lecture's for them. All those guys are dead. People thought I was going to be on that list. I've been warned repeatedly to watch my back. I've been warned that I should protect myself. <clears throat> I know three people on that list right now. Three. <clears throat> Personally, I've been told I should carry a weapon. <clears throat> I've been told to be very careful by lots of people. I've been warned by people in Europe. Son, you're being watched. I got sharp internet people that watch my back. <clears throat> This lecture is for them. They killed them, they dragged them out, they ruined their laboratories, they burned them down, they killed their children. I'm one of the survivors. I made it. They didn't. <clears throat> we went, Jeff and I went to the Standard Process, had their 90th anniversary, and the men there you guys, they're all watching these lectures. They're watching these lectures. I'm humbled how many people came up to me. I had about 30 offices. They took selfies with us. They, the staff was complaining. They listened to my lectures playing constantly in their office. You locals are getting stuff that the people around the world are having a blast. The doctors have never treated me better in my life, ever. I walked up to this guy. <clears throat> Here's your first story from that. 19 years ago, I was walking through the barn and ran into this guy. He had a handful of seeds in his pocket, and I asked, what are those seeds? He said, Spanish black radish. I see, said, what do you use those seeds? I said, I get plugged ears out of kids that have infections forever and ever. I put them on black radish, the ears pop open. And he said, my kids 
have infections all the time. I, I meet this guy 19 years later after yeah. that discussion, he says, well, I said I quoted this morning about this guy told me one time that worked with the Red Wings about these players getting this bad throat, bad ears and stuff. And he said, get your kids on the radish. And I've been on it ever since. <coughs> We're believers. They know now to grab the bottle and, and take it. And they haven't been to the doctor since. He Running plants the pill. Ten years later, after he doesn't know what he's planting. For five minutes, give me a high five. Yeah, that truth. was cool. It's a truth. What's I just walked story? up to him in the barn. It's you, 20 years later. Oh, my gosh. Here he's standing with that, the seeds from that in his hand. Wow. Nobody knows how to use this stuff. Nobody. It's sad because the government won't let anybody tell them how to use it. <clears throat> Who likes Ceruta Plus? Ceruta Plus, buckwheat. Before I get into energy, I have been called everything possibly under the sun for using energy type of a practice. I'm a demon. I'm a Satanist. I've done New Age stuff. The stuff that I've been dragged, my wife's been humiliated. My kid's back there. We've been shunned. It's, it's like, you, ever, you got any Christian church police around? Anybody ever seen a Christian church police? I've been roasted by the church police. Up one side, Shepka, you're out there somewhere. I'm ready for you. Weaver's been out there somewhere. This is the lecture for you guys. I've listened to you for 40 years. I kept my mouth shut. I'm going to show all of you today how ignorant you actually really were about energy, and you made fools of yourself by sticking yourself in things you should have kept your mouth shut about. Today is that day. Spiritualism is talking to the dead. If you see me talking to the dead today, I want somebody to raise their hand and go, that's new age stuff. There's nothing new age about what I'm going to do, but it's been dragged into the toilet because people are stupid. Acts chapter 7, last word. If you're talking to somebody, make sure you know who you're talking to. The eyes are useless when the mind is blind. So when, that, when we were at standard process, after I went back, after I filmed that, and I went back to the convention where the I don't know, 150 top doctors in the world were. I walked in the convention center, and they walked up to me. Tony had already posted that, and they had seen that 20 minutes later. Oh, my gosh, them. That's how much they're watching my stuff that I don't think anybody's paying attention to. So at the keynote speaker that night, they had a brigadier general. It's the first female general. Now, all the top of standard process watches all my lectures because they watched my stuff before I got back there. So this Brigadier General was asking, was our keynote speaker, he said, I want to ask you questions. What questions do you have for the, you just see the idiotic softball questions they asked her. You know, what was your favorite deployment? How many people did you lose? Blah, blah, blah. It was Obama's first female Brigadier General. God bless her, she was fine. <clears throat> so I'm sitting with some friends. I was supposed to have dinner with her because Charlie Dubois, the president of the process, I said, I want to talk to the general. Oh, I'll set dinner up, but that's no problem. So I had all standard dinner set up with her, but I said, look, I want to eat with Sandy and Gordy, my relatives and my friends. I don't eat with these people. I want to eat with my friends. So the dinner was over. What do you think I asked her? <clears throat> what do you think I asked her? <clears throat> How many shots did you get? All right. What do you think I asked her? I said, I did an Instagram today. I said, Who, you know, what do you think I asked the Brigadier General? She works for me, baby. I, asked, I told people to cry what I was going to say. No, you're not. I walked up to her. And I got this far in her face. I got right in her face. She was sitting down. I said, General, who do you think did 9-11? <clears throat> I took advantage of my time. Did you? And by the time she got done, I thought I was talking to Rachel Maddow on CNN. I took my advantage of that. <laughs> now, the stuff that I've had to listen to, this is my journey. <clears throat> I'm going to share with people. The doctors crowded me around at Standard Process and Biotics. How did you get here? What road did you walk? This is my road I've never, ever told any of you about. I just sat and took a beating. 
by the church people, relatives, traitorous relatives, friends, my wife, my kids. We've been beat on for 40 straight years because I'm an alternative practitioner by small-minded idiots. This is my turn. I conquered this little weird profession a long time ago. Today's my time. <laughs> We're, we got 17th century thinking out there that has warped your minds. 17th century thinking. Everything we believe about our world and our place within it takes its lead from the ideas that were formulated in the 17th century. Charles Darwin sent us backwards. You came from a monkey. That was a disaster. What does this mean? Everything in the entire universe, including the particles we learned about in fifth grade science class, derives its meaning from relationships. You have old-fashioned books. You have old-fashioned physics. You have old-fashioned everything on purpose. The zero-point field, take all the energy out of a space, that's the zero-point energy at absolute zero. There's energy in absolute zero. You're going to have to take these slides apart because there's so much information today. You're going to have rabbit holes for all winter to look up. You're going to have a blast this winter. I promise you, I'm gonna, every single one of you will think different when you leave today. I guarantee it. Remember, remember gym class? I remember gym class. Slash, splash in water, running around trying to, you know, hopefully chase the girls. Well, that's, that's, that's off now. <laughs> but when you sit and watch this, I say, you know, what a fun thing. But what's wrong with this picture? There's a nuclear blast in the background. <laughs> Don't you remember when they used to shoot off nuclear blasts when you're in high school? That happened all the time when I was at Stevenson. Yeah, here we go. We're going to fire up another one. Oh, yes. The good old days. Any, how many kids? I watch kids drink Coke out of the can all the time. Kids like Coke. What happened to the men? Anything happened to the men? I walk around, look at the men, I am horrified. Ready? Want to know what happened to the men? I saw lots of kids drink Coke, some were related to me. What a mistake. Here we go. Ready? Buckle up. Now, I haven't got to the energy part. I'm building a case. We're going to start real soon live with the wild stuff. Watch. Just watch. Drain cleaner. Don't ever do this. <coughs> Drain cleaner. <clears throat> Ready? Two hours later. That's what lines your Coke cans. That's a sheet of plastic. That Coke is sucking that plastic right off that sheet. Watch your men that drink Coke out of the cans. We had one in the family. They turn into girls after a while. You don't want to drink Coke out of a can. It's full of estrogen. It's full of estrogen. It's full of estrogen. Full of estrogen. That's your kids are being feminized right under your fingers. GQ, systemic feminization. GQ is going to have the latest episode, How Men Should Put On Makeup. I'm done. I'm still... Ask my wife, I'm 100% male still, believe it or not. I'm done with Gillette razors. I'd rather cut my face on a crappy Harry's razor and use a Gillette razor. Dick's Sporting Goods, they're done. You treat the men, you take the men out of this country, which they're doing right now, I'm done with this feminization of the men. If they don't like it, tough. <clears throat> we make men without chest and expect of them virtue and enterprise. We laugh at honor and are shocked to find traitors in our midst. We castrate and bid the geldings to be fruitful. Do you understand? Masculine men don't make traitors. Feminine men make traitors. Turn on the news. Turn on CNN. Watch what's steering our policy right now. It's a bunch of weenies. And every place they look, I got male weenies trying to tell me how I'm supposed to act. They feminize the men. And every place I look in the media, I got some 
weakling trying to tell me how I'm supposed to act. I am not a weakling, and I'm not listening to him. Dental floss. Yeehaw. Dental floss estrogenizes your kids. Fast food packaging, non-stick pans, waterproof clothing, stain-resistant carpets. Remember, Sue, we got the lazy boy? There was enough slippery crap on it. We had to get, make sure they sprayed that slippery stuff on it. So I want to make sure I had extra PFAs or whatever it is on my lazy boy chair so it slides real well. The carpet slides. I don't like my feet on this stuff. What does it do? Kidney, testicular cancer, I had that this week. Thyroid disease, high cholesterol, decreased fertility. It's making you girls again. All right, we're going live. You ready? In 1939, December 29th, every living thing on earth is a radio broadcasting and receiving, set unconsciously, sending out and receiving long wave wireless messages. You are a tunable radio. They know this. In 19, back in 1939, they said all atoms and humans are in steel are found to emit and receive standing long waves. Constantly emit radio waves which can be detected and measured. 1939. You're not even supposed to know about this. You are hackable. You are we can get under your skin easily. You can be checked from a distance easily because it's out there. You will understand this tonight. I had to show this picture to a kid. I had a 16-year-old kid in here. I had to show this picture. I said, you see that kid? I'm in front of my girlfriend's house that's sitting back there who's my wife now. I said, that kid could hit a line drive that you couldn't catch. I was a fast-pitch pitcher. You couldn't hit me when I was throwing. I said, I bought that car with my own money. I pulled the heads off and replaced the valves. <clears throat> I had a job to do that. How many of your 16-year-old kids could say that right now? And you ever do a valve job? I did a valve job in the afternoon so I could go to a concert. I did it in five hours. Geez, I was lucky the car started. <clears throat> <clears throat> if I remember Ted Nugent and Led Zeppelin, I was going to get that thing fixed. <laughs> We're not... We're getting there one way or the other. <clears throat> but that's where my journey started. I was about 17 from this point forth. You ready? I was working at Sears and Roebuck in the customer service department handling complaints for two and a half years. <clears throat> at at, at, at uh, Seven Mile Middle Belt in Livonia, Michigan. So at break one day, I, they have a used book sale in the middle of the Livonia Mall. A used book sale. I had a 15 minute break. I grabbed something to eat. I'm walking through. The entire mall was used books on a, you know, the binder up on tables to the entire mall. I walked through the entire mall and picked up one book. That book. There was a mall full of books. That one. Just that one. Hmm. I'll read this. <clears throat> I didn't care about Harry Potter. I didn't care about Chronicles of Narnia. The kids, your, the stuff your kids read were retarded. You taint them how to use little witches and warlock stuff. It's embarrassing. My kids did it. Dylan, you liked all that crap. This is what I was interested in. So you want, how did I get here? I wasn't reading juvenile stuff. I never was interested in that stuff. I was interested in advanced stuff. Yeah, because of my mother. Just my mother. So I read about Hieronymus, the Hieronymus machine. For Pete's sake, Galen T. Hieronymus was an electrical engineer. He was a genius who designed his own radionic instruments, which he added his own improvements to. He was awarded a patent for a radionic instrument for the detection and emanations from materials and measurements of the volumes thereof. He knew radionic could be a big factor to help farmers, especially after he used his radionic instrument to kill cornworms. He selected three ears of corn that the cornworms were busily eating. He took a photographic picture of these cornworms. He then broadcasted the worms a natural insecticide for three days with his radionic machine. After three days, all but one was mush. After another day, the other one turned to mush. He dissolved them through the air. Back then cleaning up the fields with quantum physics.
you understand? I sent for a Hieronymus machine. I'm 18 years old trying to make one of these in the tool house. That's the machine. <laughs> That's a real patent. It's patented. You want to know how to use the Hieronymus machine? Who'd like to know this? You think you can figure this out? Anyone you want to figure this out? Come on, you guys know everything. Everybody tells me all the stuff I don't know, and you guys want to school me all the time. Let's, you show me how to use a Hieronymus machine. All right, first of all, there's a stick plate. You're going to rub that stick plate looking for a tunable frequency. You're going to put a picture on it right there, an enclosed area with a Polaroid camera that you're trying to affect. It's a positive and a negative on a Polaroid camera because you have to have the entire full spectrum controlled on a picture. There is a natural insecticide that you're going to broadcast to everything on that picture. <clears throat> Those are tunable right there. Those are tuners to find a specific frequency that you're going to send that natural insecticide there. There's your stick plate. There's the picture. You're going to blow this through a, a prism. There's a prism right there. I had the prism. I'm making one of these things at 18. <clears throat> That's a Hieronymus machine, and it works. You have to have intent, a picture, and a reagent. And the mind is in the middle of this machine, back in the 30s and 40s. <clears throat> this is what fascinated me. People wonder how I got here for Pete's sakes. It wasn't Harry Potter. <laughs> Hieronymus engineering prowess was called upon by the medical profession. Hieron now listen. Hieronymus also observed that each organ or tissue in the human body possessed a unique scalar energy, harmonic, and that the level of vitality of an organ or tissue could likewise be ascertained by way of scalar energy analysis. Hieronymus was able to utilize a photograph of a person as well as their blood, urine, or hair samples in order to diagnose a patient's condition without the patient being there. He didn't need the patient there. He scanned their body. This was done 50, 60, 70 years ago, but like me, I've been told I'm rotten, they've ruined my family, they've affected my personal life, tainted every aspect of my life, I'm still alive. I rose to the occasion, and I want to thank all you people that said I was doing rotten, creepy stuff, because you just motivated me to do more rotten and creepy stuff. <laughs> <coughs> Write that down. <coughs> Radionics. How many people know what radionics are? Let's all see your hands go up. I got one radionic practitioner. Two. That's it. Radionics. The basic idea, each individual organism or material rate, radiates and absorbs energy via a unique wave field. The more complex the material, the more complex the waveform. Radionic equipment. It's easy to find. Fantastic stuff. Mind-blowing. I'm all alone. I'm doing all this stuff at 18 in my own little brain in the tool house. Everybody's playing their little games, LeBron James or Al Kaline stuff. Not me. I was doing other things. There's reagents. These are, these are all things that can be used. You want to see if you're going to raise the energy or lower the energy when you scan that into the machine. You're going to scan the rates of the reagents that can raise or lower the general vitality of the things on that photograph that have been captured in an emission and an emulsion. A Polaroid 600 camera had to be used because you had to catch it, you had to be have a negative in the picture. She's a chiropractor. She's a genius. She became gravely ill and in jail. They half killed her. The stuff that she was doing, she's a genius. Absolute genius. What they did to her, I'm doing this lecture for them. They just told me I was doing spooky stuff, right, Mary Lou? I'm just doing channeling stuff. I've got some kind of thing going with the devil here for 40 years. People are stupid. <clears throat> George and Marjorie D. Loire, right there. Those are <clears throat> they're geniuses. I'm humbled to talk about them. You don't, we don't deserve to make fun of them, and everybody made fun of them. They died in shame because. People suck. <clears throat> Sorry, I'll have to cut that out probably. <laughs> History of radionics, Ruth Drown. The most famous discovery was that patients could be diagnosed and conditions balanced at a distance using only a spot of the patient's blood as a witness, no matter where the patient was in the world. He didn't need him there. 
She could read the blood. It's the field. You're going to know how this works soon. Pay attention. I'm just setting the stage. This has been out there a long time. But when you talk about it, they get all over you because they don't want you to know this. She was convicted of fraud and medical quackery. All of her radionic equipment was seized and destroyed. She was sentenced to time in prison, which she served. By the time she was released from prison, she was gravely ill and died a short time later. And that was in 1966. <clears throat> Ruth drowned. Now pay attention. The only legal use for radionics in the United States is in agriculture and animals. Wait till you see what they're doing with agriculture. The quantum world. Agriculture. That's a disgrace what they've done. The practitioners that made a difference, they've tainted their lives. The De Loire's made many experiments. De Loire had a laboratory in Britain. He got a French patent for his radionic machine. The De Loire's made many experiments in radionics in general with the De Loire radionic camera. In particular, a few notable experiments with the camera was when they produced a picture of a three-month-old fetus from the blood sample of a pregnant woman, and she was 50 miles away at the time. Your body records everything. The field records everything. Everything's been recorded in your stamp. Your blood records everything. <clears throat> An autopsy after the patient's death showed a tumor. She could find these things. As was the case with Drown in the States, G. Loire faced a legal battle in 1969. These are recent times. They have bankrupted him because he was doing fantastic stuff. I'm here because they only tainted my reputation. They affected their lives. You can beat on me all day. You're not changing a thing that I'm doing. <clears throat> About bankrupted George and his wife. Fantastic. I'm humbled to know these people. Ready? George D. Loire said, it would appear that each molecule of matter is capable of producing a tiny electric voltage that is specific to itself, and which transmits rather like a tiny radio transmitter receiver. A collection of molecules, therefore, is capable of transmitting a generic pattern. This means that the single from a plant or human is quite individual, and that each plant or person will receive a transmission on their own generic pattern. It is here that the photograph plays its part, it is thought that the emulsion on the negative retains the generic pattern of the object photographed and can be induced to re-radiate as a carrier. Thus, with a photograph of a plant in the circuit, it is possible to affect that plant at a distance. They were growing plants with pictures on them in the dark on the picture. Dr. Albert Abrams was considered the father of radionics. He discovered it in the early 20th century they were, back in the, they were using radionics back as early as the 13th century, and there's an old radionic machine from history. Dr. Abrams' death, he is still not given the credit and recognition that he rightfully deserves. In some circles, he's called a quack and a charlatan. I've been called that by church people. <clears throat> These same people say Dr. Abrams' radionic machine was just a scam, a get-rich-quick scheme, which is a lie. He was a multimillionaire. When he died, he left enough money in his will to build a radionic hospital. The money was stolen, and the hospital was never built. You ready? Do these guys look like spiritists or trans channelers? Or These are my cousins up north. Everybody's dead. This is what normal men look like. If you walk through Walmart right now, how many people do you think look like that? Anybody? Anybody look like that? That's what normal men look like. You wouldn't have wanted to go into that house. That would have been the biggest mistake in your entire life, would be to go in. Those guys were lumberjacks their entire life. Dead, dead, one's live. There's my cousin Gary. There's Uncle Orly, Aunt Beatrice. A big part of my life was up north. No longer. Up north is a mess now, but I sure had a blast at that point in my life. Here's what they look like. I'm getting to a story. This is my life. I'm 10 now. We went to a wedding like that in Vanderbilt, Michigan. I got to take a picture of him. That's, that's a wedding suit right there for Gary. <laughs> I said, you can't go to a wedding like this. He said, yes, I am. They killed my cousin with 22 radioactive seeds for a PSA that was a six. He rotted away with multiple myeloma right in front of him. They smoked my cousin that I expected to spend the rest of my life with. 
They killed my cousin. That's the only reason I went up north. There's no reason to go up north now. They took my... He went and had those because he was scared he was going to die of prostate cancer because PSA was a six. Gary, I can't believe this happened to you. They killed all my friends, relatives. Mike's about dead now. They took Jerry out. Mike's drooling. He's a mess. You ready? Okay, buckle up. Another piece of my life. A big piece of my life. Hit it. This is my famous Uncle Dick that grew his eye back in front of the eye doctor. He's not getting shots anymore in his eye. And there's a very powerful story in my past that I want to record for the future. He was living in Boyne City at the time, and I was a little boy. <clears throat> and he had to find a well in the backyard. It was a very important story that I'll never forget. I'd like you to tell the world how you guys found a well in the olden days. By well, using two wires and walking around and when the wires crossed, that's where the water was. I don't know, what do they call that uh, witch? A water witch? Dowsing? Uh, yeah, dowsing. Dowsing. Oh, oh the evil dowsing. The demon yard. stuff, I right Mary Lou? Do it. It's the with, demon stuff. Two wires. <laughs> I took two clothes hangers and opened them up and made a handle on the end of each one. And I walked around and when those wires crossed well, by themselves, that's where we started uh, driving for the well. How far down was the well there? 23 feet. 23 feet. That's up north where there really isn't a lot of water, is there? Right. Uh, most wells around there were 90 some feet. I remember the day that you, because everybody was walking around the backyard and it was very simple <coughs> to find that well, because I remember as a kid, you guys had me walk across the lawn as a little kid. I was, I, it worked just like it did standing over the well. I remember watching you guys up north find wells in the olden days using those little coat hangers and it was very successful. It wasn't odd. It was a normal thing to do and I'll never forget that. Was that? Thank you for your story. You ready? And uh, I had later on <clears throat> the point got plugged up, so I decided I, I wanted a four-inch well. So we had somebody come in and drill a well right alongside of it, and he went down. He had to go down 30 feet, and the water was terrible. See, so you found a better well yourself yep. than he could find with his <laughs> instruments. Yep. Famous story of my youth. Thank you for your story once again. Two coat hangers. I'm 10 years old. We're in Boyne Falls in his backyard. All those lumberjacks were sitting around. I got two, I'm watching these guys, two coat hangers. Very simple walking through the backyard. Watching real dowsters in action. Walked, walking, things crossed, and they went straight, just like that. Walked, crossed, and went straight. And they're like, you walked right over the well. So watching these, these men were dousing for the well. I said, why did you do it like this? He said, Grandpa taught us that. He had 14 kids and they were poor. They couldn't afford a well driller. They had to find a well. <clears throat> watching them crossed, that was the well. Then they said, now walk, a, or this is the quant, you're gonna understand this tonight. The quantum physics, I got intent, I got a field, I know what I'm doing. The brain is smart. A thought's a thing and distance is irrelevant. Learn that. A thought is a real thing, and the distance it goes is not relevant. So walking across that, I'm 10. Which way is the water going? <clears throat> which way is the water coming from? That way. They knew which way the water was going. With the stupid rods. <clears throat> he pulled out a rock and a pendulum, 10, 20, 30, 40, 27 feet down. Drew a pipe, hit the water, we went to the next house, did the same thing, hit a pipe, hit the water, was that spooky? These guys found it like that. And I watched them do it, and everybody in that backyard could do it. Is that spooky? Was that the devil, or was that quantum stuff that you're not smart enough to understand? <clears throat> <clears throat> That's what my mom had laying around, the secret life of plants. Anybody read the secret life of plants here? Somebody's got to give me a break here. Somebody's had to do something. How many? Raise your hands. How mind-blown were you from that book? 
Please, main guy, come on, stand up for a second. Please, I, I appreciate you. You're waiting all my stuff. What was that book like? <laughs> Thank you. These guys drove from Maine to this lecture. Was the adjustment worth it? Yes. Maine. All right, you ready? It's going to keep getting heavy. We're going to get heavier. A little buckle up. <clears throat> my mom had intelligent literature around my house. Thank God she had cool stuff that made my mind grow. The stuff that people have had their kids read made their minds shrink. I sit with the kids, they have small minds, they don't have any kind of interests, and they're very dull. I had these kind of interests as a kid, can you believe it? This is the stuff I was studying when not one person was interested in this world but me. You ready? Plants can think what they can do. We're going to give you a little short there is a galvan. A galvanometer is the part of a polygraph lie detector which, when attached to a human being by wires, will show you a current, response to mental images or the slightest surges of human emotion. This is called the Baxter effect. Cleve Baxter was the leading foremost lie detector examiner. In 1966, in a bad day, he decides, I got a great idea. I'm going to hook up my, my lie detector test to a plant and see what the plant does. So he hooked it up to the plant. The things that happened changed his world in 10 minutes. <clears throat> Thinking that plant was alive and it had a life cycle. He set up, now I'm gonna, I have to get a bunch of experiments out. They put up a plant, hooked up to the big, the, the plant he used was the Dracinia, the Dracinia. It's got a big palm leaf. So what he did, he hooked it up to this plant and he put a bunch of plants nearby and they took people one by one through the room and they hacked up everything in front of that plant. Now that plant was able to tell who did the plants. When they walked them through one at a time, the plant fainted when that guy walked through. <clears throat> they knew that. This was proved over and over. When you cared for your plants and talked to your plants, when they went on vacation, the plants were sad. And you're 400 miles away, the moment you start coming back, the plant perked up, it knew you were coming back. I'm not kidding. Read the book. They put, am I making anything up? Thank God somebody at least wasn't reading Harry Potter. <laughs> My God. They put a bunch of live shrimp in a, uh, in, a, in a container with an automatic timer on it, hooked all the plants up and left. No one knew what the timer was set. The moment those shrimp hit that boiling water, those plants went nuts. They registered the moment the plants died, or the, the shrimp died, in the water. They are living alive. They know the people, <clears throat> they have stomachs, they have brains, and they think. And that book will blow your mind. Maybe you want to read some smarter things. <clears throat> <laughs> so, he's all excited about this. How smart are the plants? He gets all the scientists together. Watch what, it, watch what this plant's going to do when I try to kill it. And the plant just looked at him. Huh? The plant knew there was no intent. Yes! It was smarter. It was a failure. Everybody leaves. 45 minutes later, the plant walked up. Somebody get you this time. And the plant knew exactly. The plant knew he was not going to get him that time. And the plant responded to his phony energy. Absolutely. How crazy is that? That's three pages of the book. Unbelievable. The quantum world, spooky action in the distance. You're going to know a little physics about this. We're just not going to make it spooky. I'm going to make it science. Science. Can you imagine? I'm not spooky. It's scientific. Embarrassing. <clears throat> I've been embarrassed my whole life. <clears throat> Bezos. Me and my wife are saying I've worked about as long as I wanted to work. I've about had it, so... I made that comment, you know, if you guys support this office and make it easy to pay all these people that have been with me forever, because Jeff Bezos is a turd. That's what, there's uh, Whole Foods right now. Whole Foods, they got drag queen hour for everybody, just to make sure that you know where the tomatoes are at or whatever it is. I don't know what for is. There you go. This is going to be the grooming of the next generation. Whole Foods. Bezos is the, you know, 
Those people make me sick. Whole Foods cut health care benefits for 1,900 part-time employees. That's what happens when you pay $11 billion in profit, pay no taxes, we subsidize the shipping, he cuts his employees' money, and he buys a $444 million yacht after divorce cash. <clears throat> Support, buy your supplements from here if you want us to keep doing this. If Bezos is your doctor, find him. You ready? Let's see what, the, let's see what history talks about. Hit it. It was the nature of fundamental particles which make up the world we see around us that Einstein had come to Brussels to discuss. And it was here that Einstein entered into a heated debate that would lead to the discovery of quantum entanglement. A concept that would trouble him for the rest of his life. David Kaiser has come to the place where it all began. This is the original uh, Solvay Institute building, beautiful grand building. And this is the place uh, back in October 1927, 27. where the fifth Solvay conference was held. This amazing week-long series of discussions on really what the world is made of, on the nature of matter, and the new quantum theory. And these steps are the very steps on which this famous group photograph is taken. It's a collection of some of the most brilliant people in the world. Here in the front row, we see Albert Einstein and the great Marie Curie and Max Planck. In the back row, standing the dapper Eric Schroeder. These are smart guys. Rash Pay attention. In the mid 20s, Werner Heisenberg and Wolfgang and Pauli. These scientists were the pioneers of quantum mechanics. I have a huge Britain's photograph up on the walls, a poster in my college dorm room. My Roommates had their favorite bands, and I had in the 1927 Solvay Conference. So did I. Said a lot. This was one of the greatest meetings of minds in history. More than half were, or would become, Nobel Prize winners. Their experiments were showing that deep inside matter, tiny particles like atoms and their orbiting electrons, were not solid little spheres. They seemed fuzzy and undefined. So th this group here, this, these, these were the folks who had just been plumbing deeper and deeper and deeper to find what they hoped would be a bedrock of what the world is made of. And to their surprise, they found things less and less solid as they dug in. This world was not tiny little bricks that got smaller and smaller. At some point, the bricks gave way to this mush and what looked like solidity, solidness, in fact, became very confusing and, and kind of a whole new way of thinking about nature. This is the pictures I had. I didn't care about Al Kaline, LeBron James. He's another one they had to get rid of. He's just a poor example of these athletes and the stuff they act like. I had these guys were the ones I was impressed with. Madame Curie, there's Einstein. Niels Bohr was 20 years old. He's schooling Einstein because Einstein was wrong. He wasn't right. He was wrong. Schrodinger, I've read his stuff. I've read Planck stuff. I've read Picard stuff. Walter Heisenberg, I've read that stuff. These guys were brilliant in 1927. I want you to go tell them that this is the devil that they're working with now. These guys were geniuses. They would have made you, they would have schooled you hard on your ignorance. I read all Tesla stuff at 19. I wanted to see what this guy had to say because he understood energy better than anybody else did. They tried to ruin him also. I'm here sticking up for these people. I've dealt with enough of the Christian policemen in my life. I am done dealing with people with IQs that aren't high enough to understand this stuff. Learn something or shut up. Nikolai Tesla was a Serbian-born American inventor <clears throat> and said, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than the previous centuries of its existence. Non-physical phenomena, that's what I'm teaching you about today, energy. Nikolai Tesla spoke eight languages, 
produced the first motor that ran on AC, created underlying tech for wireless communication, held approximately 300 patents. The FBI raided his files the day he died, and Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> 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 How many people read his books? Come back to me, miss me and you, buddy. We have to go out to lunch. Let's talk about this. They can have their little magic wands with their little sticks at Universal, and everybody's got demons, and they got all kinds of weird things going on. We could have a cool discussion. I hung out, I hung out with guys like you. The doctor crowd was these other guys. The average working stiff was always the people I hung out with. The blue collar guys are my guys. They've always been. They're smarter than the other ones. Don't ever think I look down on you guys that don't do what I do. Because <clears throat> you guys are, can do stuff I could never do. All of my investigations seem to point to the conclusion that there are small particles, each carrying so small a charge, that we are justified in calling them neutrons. They move with great velocity, exceeding the speed of light. We never understood things that ex exceeded the speed of light. Now, don't get me wrong. Let me finish this. <clears throat> we got to build that wall. <laughs> got to build that wall. The Mexicans are taking advantage of us. You ready? When the Mexicans got a dirty job to do, they're really smart. I love the Mexicans. They're so smart, they hire a white guy to do a dirty job. So we were living. This guy, my wife said, look at this guy outside the backyard. So. Hit it. I watched this guy spray three and a half miles in front of himself and walk through it. <laughs> Hire Whitey when you got a dirty job. Three and a half miles just like that. Um, this ain't the smartest guy out there, is it? <clears throat> okay. That was recess. Now remember, I, got, I wrote some down here. Who do you think cleaned out oh, yeah, yeah. Tesla's paperwork? <laughs> John Trump. What did John Trump tell Donald Trump? There's 1,200 patents right now that are being kept from you guys that would absolutely revolutionize the world. Totally. Our record collection went to a little tiny iPad, your whole collection, and we're still using gasoline? That's ridiculous. That stuff could have been put away with 50 years ago if everybody wasn't such a jerk about energy. I have to show this clip. It's a six minute clip. I hate watching myself. I want to show you quantum stuff on a person. I'm showing you all different kinds of expressions of quantum therapy. How to do stuff like this. Watch how, if, maybe in the fall, I'll pull some people out of the crowd with some bad parts and do this. Watch how simple you can do this. There's no tricks to this. This is the first time they've ever seen it. They came all the way from Albuquerque, New Mexico. They will be impressed to see this because they watch, you guys watch this stuff all over the world. Here we go. I hate this. I just want to show this picture. She's never well, been adjusted in her life. She's New Mexico. Right side of neck for a long time. But I want to show you something interesting about this lovely lady. We can, you know, compress this down. Put this arm down. Hold tight. Now, it's one arm. Hold tight. Her neck is so dislocated for so many years. What, what year did that happen, 1996? Well, I don't well, even know when it happened. All right, we'll run a hair analysis later. That's good. Put both arms out. Hold tight. Just kidding. Now, this lady is so frankly weak, you get used to it. Pain fibers go away. You just got these weak arms. You can't really do much of anything anymore. Grab my bags. <laughs> so you get used to this. This is how people fall down the stairs when their leg gives out. Why did my leg give up? For Pete's sake, you didn't have a leg to start with. Your leg was giving out before you even stood up. Now, he's, watch, this is Dr. Versendahl's stuff at its best. These are total rookies that just watched the lectures, <laughs> came in from yeah, New Mexico. Exactly. <laughs> now, I said, you get the that camera, I'm going to show some stuff yeah. from the great Dr. Versendahl. Yeah. You sit over here for a second. Let me have you stand up. Now look at this guy. 
He looks like me, hopefully, when I get a little older, because he's got he's a stud. <laughs> I got one arm, I got another arm, I got nobody in this room knows what I'm gonna do except Amy. Stand up for a second. Come on up. Come on up. There is no trick to this. Put your arm out. Yeah. Put no stay right, stay, stay right there. Put your hold, put that arm oh. down. Hold tight. There's your right arm. Oh. Hold stay right this there. This guy's a stud. I could chin up on his arm, not There's next to her. Up, stay right there. Okay. Put both arms together. Hold mm -hmm. tight. There's they have to be touching. Oh my gosh. Hold on. <laughs> the spot that's stuck in her neck. In the back. Five, six, four, five. I'm going to shut Versendahl stuff. Dr. Versendahl Tottises. Versendahl's down in the front, up in the back. So C5, oh, C6, oh, oh, C4, oh. C5. I'm rubbing up on her neck. I'm shut it off. Right there. I'm rubbing up on her if neck. It's the right spot. The injury is that caused all this mischief. Get your arm out. Hold tight. If I'm on the right spot, the body will tell me where the injury is. Well, these have never, nobody here, now. I did this just for you guys. Back. Now I'm gonna go down. You guys want me to teach this stuff. I'm showing you stuff right here. I'm going down in the back for the injury. I'm gonna turn it, it back on. Stay there, hold tight. You can't hurt your arms again. <laughs> now, that first of all, was a genius. Down. That's a little sliver of the demonstrations I saw 30 years ago. We'll fix this so we don't have to do that reflex thing. What's your story? This is this very powerful but strange connection that exists between pairs of particles. Even if they're very far apart, in a way they're always coordinated. Nature's fundamental building blocks could be connected and influence each other instantaneously, as if the space between them doesn't exist, as if two objects can mirror each other without any apparent connection. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. He rejected the idea and tried to prove it couldn't be real. You could have situations where the cause and the effect happen at the same time. Einstein was wrong. We've been following wrong stuff forever. The intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. And we've created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. If you don't have an intuitive spirit, an intuitive mind, doctoring is not your business. And the MCAT and the stuff that they appeal to, they appeal to the wrong people in school all the time. This is not a job for analytical people. I love lecturing to the valedictorians. I will destroy them. They stick, <laughs> this, I've already done it over and over. They, the brainiacs are nothing but in trouble. They, taught, they believed nonsense and they memorized nonsense. I wasn't good at nonsense. We measured it and that's what we got. <laughs> The outcome was exactly what Bohr's quantum mechanics Neil's predicted. Bohr, the other guy. The experiment appeared to show Not that yet. the spooky connections of quantum entanglement did exist in the natural world. Could it be that the great Albert Einstein was wrong? Yes! Einstein was wrong. How about this? I'm going to give you another, the Christian police, I got another one for the Christian police. There's another one. Ley lines, Mother Earth, Sedona, Arizona, PowerPoints. Hippies, they're jiggling, their doc got their rocks out, they're doing their dousing and all. We've been out to Sedona. We had a great time out there. You know how you can find the PowerPoints? The trees are twisted. The trees are twisted right there. They're going clockwise or counterclockwise. Watch the trees twist. So I talked about this just to rile up the Christians because they know everything while they don't know a lot and to talk about this. So I wanted to talk about Mother Earth to stir them all up, which I did. Come on, this is New Age stuff, right? The Indians, the, the, the ley lines, the Mother Earth, the spider web thing. Come on. Who's would believe this nonsense? 
I've been told that's crazy to talk about that. So when I got done with this lecture, Colonel walked up to me and said, I have nuclear clearance. I talked about the ley lines. He said, I have nuclear clearance to fly an A-10 Warthog. He said, how did you know all the ICBMs were positioned on ley lines? Every intercontinental ballistic missile we have was stuck on a ley line because it got it out of the atmosphere quick. That's a classified secret. So I talked about ley lines, which everybody thought, oh, that's funny stuff. Really? Ask the military how funny it really is. That's real. You're not supposed to know that. <clears throat> Harry, I know you're watching this. There's my buddy. I owe him a lot. Harry, you're retiring. I had to adjust his neck when he came in to lecture for the doctors. He got a great, sent me a nice letter about his neck adjustment. Enjoy your retirement, Harry. You earned it. <clears throat> this one. You want to get my goat? This one gets my goat. This is another one gets my goat. This is not a man's exercise. I have nothing against yoga, but if this dude has to take three medications because he's got a clot from standing like this, I got a hockey game tomorrow at 9.30. I'm going to take him out on the ice. We're going to show him. You're going to hit with a puck at about 80 miles an hour. I'm see if this... <laughs> I got to take my meds so I can do this. Man, that looks awful challenging to me. I don't know how I could possibly do that. They've turned this into weenies, not me. <coughs> That commercial drives me nuts. <laughs> oh, uh-oh. Recess, recess. Did you ever think they grow people? There's things you don't want to talk about. Yeah. I've always wanted to talk about some things, but I can't because the biggest concern about this lecture was not Satan. I thought the military was going to scrub my lecture. <laughs> I was scared of the military scrubbing this lecture because I'm not done yet. There is more stuff that might be kind of sketchy. So, you ready? Do you ever think there's people farms out there? Yes. I'm not going to talk about it because they'll scrub the lecture. Let's take a look at something that happened recently. There's the school shooters. <clears throat> Is that scary? They're growing them somewhere. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I, maybe I shouldn't be paying attention this much. Maybe I should put my head in the sand like most of the other people. Just forget about it. Keep moving. Talk that Satan runs the show. God, I'm so sick of that. You have no clue how sick of that I am. So, agriculture still can be used for radionics. A field broadcaster. There's a quantum field broadcaster. They're growing for stuff with energy. No fertilizer. Energy. It's a field broad. A field broadcaster is a self-driven organizational energy device that, when properly used, sets up resonant biodynamic wave patterns of the energy that plants and animals respond to with increased vigor and balance. Why use a field broadcaster? I'm going to leave you with some stuff that you're going to have to read because I can't go over all this stuff. Field broadcaster. Biological chips. Quantum. This is what's being done in Poland. <clears throat> Biological code programming chips. That's what they're doing in Poland right now in Kepno, Poland. All they had to do was put this little chip underneath the plant, activate it quantumly, no electrical connection through the field. They had a 27% increase of their plant material. 27%. No fertilizers, no pesticides, no chemicals energy. They killed the bugs. They grew the plants. This steps on so many toes. It's the devil. You're going to get a quantum chip. You're going to buy a whole bunch of tobacco. You're going to buy a bunch of quantum chips. You can activate. You buy normal crummy tobacco. The chip controls the flavor. The, tea, the chip controls the flavor. You buy tea. You can buy 100 chips. You can make standard tea taste like anything you want by activating the chip. You can change the taste of a cigarette. They're doing this in real time in Europe. We're still stuck on gasoline. You don't even want to know what they're doing in Europe treating cancer off the quantum field. They're reading your field and treating you over here from there. You just don't know about this. You've missed all this. 
I was 18 tracking this stuff down all alone. And when I made a career out of it, I was told I was doing the wrong thing the whole way. Every day, I'm reminded of it constantly. As a matter of fact, yesterday, right, Steve? On demand, change in taste can be achieved with no energy, filters, and chemical needs. They're doing live demonstrations on your tobacco. We can make it taste like whatever it wants from the field. How many people knew about this? You watched my lectures, that's how. Quantum field broadcasting, May 16, 2019. The originally, Hieronymus built mineral release, nitrogen fixation, digestion, and nutrition into the soil without much attention to photosynthesis. They're going to quote Hieronymus today. The intention is to improve the entire environmental picture so both quality and, quality and quantity of growth improves. These companies are so confident, they come in, tell us what your yield is, you pay us on the increase. <laughs> That's how, how easy is that? You know nothing about any of this stuff. We've been hidden from all of it. There's the there is a quantum irradiated plant. No electricity. There's a normal one. That's the one they did with energy. This spooky action at a distance. Energy. The CB content went from 1 to 2 to 4.5. They get paid by how much CBD the plants produce. They drove them, that, the, the concentration, that doubled the profits, and they just took a percentage of the increase. Field broadcasters. You've heard of, how about that? I know that. I've heard of those vineyards. Those people all use quantum field broadcasters in their stuff. The quantum world. You don't know anything about it because it's spooky. Hit it. For Einstein, it's simply common sense that if objects are separated in space, for one to affect the other, something must travel between them. And that traveling takes time. Quantum particles acting in unison could be explained if they were communicating. One particle instantly sending a signal to the other, telling it what properties it should have. But that would require a signal traveling faster than the speed of light. Yes! Something Einstein's theory of special relativity had proven impossible. And it would mean the particles were fuzzy and undefined until the moment they were observed. Instead, Einstein thought the particles should be real all along. They must carry with them a hidden layer of deeper physics that determines their properties from the start. Almost the quantum world is faster than the speed of light. Nothing is supposed to go faster than the speed. Your thoughts travel in the quantum world. They're measurable, they're hackable, and they're tunable. Simple. Anywhere, any place, anytime. You put barriers in front of your head that didn't need to be there. Where do we go wrong? 40 years in practice, I've had zero respect except from all. How many people have I fixed in here? Raise your hands. How many patients do I have? This is where I get my respect from. When I leave here, it goes back to being a trance channeler. So where do we go wrong? Mary Lou, Duff, where do we go wrong? Anybody know where it went? You're learning new stuff, come on. Where do we go wrong? Help me out. I've been the one taking the heat for, since 1981. Where do we go wrong? Hit it. I'm sorry for the images, but I don't care. The first people to react to this extraordinary result were not the world's leading physicists. Ronald Reagan's definition of a hippie was someone who dresses like Tarzan, has hair like Jane, and smells like Cheetah. <laughs> A small 
group of free-thinking physicists at the heart of San Francisco's New Age scene got in touch with John. They call themselves the Fundamental Physics Group. They spell physics with an F. Some members would experiment with psychedelic drugs. I mean, they were, they were kind of in the flow of the kind of hippie scene. And that group was just mesmerized by the question of entanglement. <laughs> The idea was just to discuss fringe subjects with an open mind, and I thought, oh, sure, uh, that's kind of what I do. They were doing their best to link Eastern mysticism with quantum entanglement. They sold a lot of popular textbooks. There were a lot of followers. Their books became bestsellers, like The Tao of Physics, which highlighted that Eastern philosophy and quantum entanglement both describe the deep connectedness of things in the universe. It was the great cosmic oneness. The group held meetings at the iconic Esalen Institute. It was a marvelous, beautiful place where they would discuss all of these ideas. It was right on the Pacific coast with the overflow from the hot tubs cascading down the cliffs into the Pacific Ocean. To my knowledge, no uh, useful uh, connections to Eastern mysticism were ever discovered by the group. <laughs> but it was fun. <laughs> the fundamental physics group may not have uncovered the secrets of cosmic oneness, but in seeing entanglement as central to physics, they were decades ahead of their time. This is how it started. I've been barbecued because of them. Every day of my life. And it has never stopped. It won't stop when I'm dead. Crowian photography. Let's talk about energy. This guy decided to take pictures of things. All right, what's that look like? They could cut the leaf and the leaf stayed there. Okay. We need to know more about this, I think. We don't understand. This is not the quantum field. You're not looking at the quantum. This is energy. This is different. Energy. <clears throat> Pictures. Raw, cooked. I'm not going to talk about, everybody says, you're going to talk about 5G. Everybody knows, no, I'm not talking about 5G. You guys know about 5G. I talked about what you guys know nothing about. Nothing. So if I'm going to bore you about who read about 5G, everybody thought for sure I'm going to talk about that. You found that stuff. I shared with you the stuff that you never found. So 5G is going to take out your eyes and your kidneys. Cataracts, attached retinas, ask DHS. we got supplements to support everything. I support my eyes because I'm sick of wearing glasses. i got to support my kidneys because I can tell when those things are acting up. It pays to be a patient of DHS. Does it not? Once 5G, we just talked about your body being a gigantic antenna. Every single cell is an antenna. Every single organ is an antenna. Your whole body is an antenna. What do you think the 5G is going to do to you? It's a millimeter ionizing wavelength. It's going to fry us. Hook, line, and sinker. This is what we walked around at the airport to get away from because it's a, it's a millimeter wavelength of ionizing radiation. It's going to cleave electrons off the shell constantly. So if you're living on Prilosec and Adderall and all those chemicals while you're getting radiated, you'll be living on quality supplements. Right, Chris? Thank, now, there's Chris back there, the rep, my rep from Standard Process. He's a great rep. He's the guy that introduced me last time. Are you enjoying this lecture, Chris? Absolutely. Are we pushing the envelope a little? Absolutely. How, much <laughs> how much spiritualism, Mary Lou, how much spiritualism has gone on so far? None. Wow. No spiritualism. I haven't communicated with the dead yet, have I? For God's sakes, what I've had to listen to. Except some brain dead people, I'll tell you, I got a bunch of those. My life has been surrounded. You have no clue what my private life is like because I do this. And you know something? I want to thank all you people that chewed all over me because you never distracted me one second. Not one. Ever. Driving my little bike down the road. What's this celebrating? Come on. 
ovarian cancer. That's the color of every disease has its own color. The color of the ovaries is right there. So I promised you a gift today. I promised the women a gift today. I saved this special story for years. It's an energy story. Only a serious muscle tester knows this. Nobody else knows this. So you can pick on me, you can say all the weird stuff I'm doing, but if you can't muscle test, you might miss this. Hit it. No, no, I'm sorry. This is, this, I asked this now. In Plymouth, the yoga group, Brent and Sherry Reilly have been patients for 30 years. She, she has a kid because of this office. They're wonderful people. I highly recommend, I asked her, please, I want your story. I'm going to put your card up there. They did not ask for this. This is a million dollar story for the women. Listen close. This is the famous story from Sherry, the lady that owns a wonderful yoga studio with her husband, Brent. Brent, and they're perfectly normal people, and I've had a nice long relationship with them. Sherry came in a number of years ago with a lot of pressure in her lower abdomen with a lot of trouble festering with her ovaries. She was starting to have some ovarian issues with an elevated blood test. What was the blood test? The CA125 test put me the, over the limits that shows you have cancer traces in your body. So with this funny abdominal pressure that this young lady came in with, this is a secret. Pay attention. I'm lactose intolerant. Milk and ice cream makes my nose run. Galactose is different. There's no symptoms to a galactose intolerant. Milk and ice cream and yogurt will drive a galactose intolerant person nuts. Only a real muscle tester can tell a difference between lactose and galactose. I test weak for milk and ice cream. I'm strong for yogurt, cheese. I'm fine. If you're galactose intolerant, you test negative for all three. Stopping her daily yogurt and her dairy, all her numbers went back to normal. Her cancer How long went did away. It take? Four weeks. Four weeks. Women do not understand when they're galactose intolerant. I've had women on preventative chemotherapy for years, stopping the yogurt and the dairy and the cheese, and the numbers went back down to normal in front of the oncologist. This is a gigantic problem that people do not understand. The lactose has a serious problem in women. And simple things like yogurt will drive it nuts. But if you're not a muscle tester, it's very difficult to find out who is and who isn't. This is a famous story. It changed your life, saved your relationship. You want to have kids with that reproductive tract. And life is history. And I'd love to share that story with everybody. And we might do some muscle testing in the future to demonstrate that but people that are watching this, there's no symptoms to a galactose intolerant. I love this story. It changed your life. This is a famous story from my past. Enjoy. Thank you, Dr. Tan. And she had, they wanted to gut her and take, give her a complete hysterectomy. She's got a kid that's 18 now. Now, I'm lactose intolerant, a muscle tester. You only will know this with a muscle tester. Give me, stick my finger in milk, done. Ice cream, done. Cheese, I can eat. Yogurt, I can eat. I have no allergies from that. Galactose has no symptoms. She tested with cheese, yogurt, dairy, milk. Gilda Radner went to five gynecologists to find her cancer. If you're galactose intolerant, you can get cancer easily with your little yogurt every morning with your special bacteria so you can poop. It's that bad. So Dawn, I'm going to use her name, God rest her soul, rest in peace, Dawn. She was a delightful woman that any man would be lucky to have as a wife. She came in half eaten away. She had part of her breast taken off, the other part of her breast taken the rest of the breast taken off, then it's in the bone, then it's in the sternum, just watching it eat her away. I get here after seven years of this kind of chemo. And you could tell she doesn't got cancer, something's eating her away. It's different. So I... Galactose and time stopped and it stopped. She was getting preventative chemo because the CEA numbers would never go down, ever. 
We stopped it, boom, just like that. The doctors walked in after seven years of chemo, what'd you do? So they stopped my dairy. And the oncologist whispered in her ear, we know dairy's causing cancer, we don't know what to do about it. Dawn's long dead, her, her dad that sent it to me is long dead. You better find a muscle tester that knows this because it's given men prostate cancer, it's given all kinds of problems. And only an energy practitioner knows the story. Nobody else does. Dr. Reedy, you made it. I put your card up. Stand up for a second. There's... Now, the reason I put your card up, not, I didn't want nothing from you. I didn't ask for nothing. This guy has a real practice like me. He puts his patients before himself. That's why I put your card up. <clears throat> I like doctors that actually put the patients. I have not met many people in my life that put my interests ahead of theirs. I appreciate him making my teeth. There's my prosthodontist and my, and my dentist. <clears throat> Hit it. <clears throat> there, five years ago, Kramer at the Harvard Medical School found galactose increased the risk of ovarian cancer. Yeehaw. Back in 1989, a Harvard study found that when dairy product consumption exceeds the enzyme's capacity to break down galactose, there's the buildup of galactose in the blood, which may affect the woman's ovaries. I decided, let's just muscle test for that. And what happened for that was mind-blowing. I've stopped people from dying by stopping their yogurt. But that's spooky stuff, so I just ignore the muscle testing stuff. Just guess if you're galactose intolerant, maybe. See what you can think. The blacks have 95 to 100% intolerant for, for galactose, for milk. Spike Lee is selling you black people milk and ice cream. Alicia Keys is selling you milk and ice cream. You can't digest ice cream because you don't have the enzymes for it. So Dick Cheney is going to extend milk to Africa so we can kill everybody and steal your minerals. What is, name the two things they sent to Africa, wheat and dairy. Two zeros. That's where people that can't die, and only a muscle tester is going to tell you. Blacks, 90%. Filipinos, 90%. Thai. The only people that can drink milk are the Danes and the Finns. They got the enzymes in their stomach still. Chromatogram, you're going to have to read that on your own. We're doing well, aren't we? I'm doing well with this. Synthetic seed that you get from China in a drum full of arsenic and natural vitamin C that has a pattern from the Creator. I wanted Jesus to sit in the front row of this lecture. If I could get Jesus here and say, look, when I, when I crossed the line, please tell me what line was crossed, because everybody was sure I spent 40 years crossing the line. What line has been crossed right now? Anybody see a line that's been crossed? It's embarrassing. The fresher the body, the greater the biological activity. I love keeping my body healthy and clean, simple stuff. I don't know why you put that there. I was accused of using polarizers. He uses a polarizer. You ready? Nothing. There's my bed. I sleep between, people say, what do you use for your hockey injuries? Hot or cold? I've never used a cold pack or a heating pad in my life. I got a polarizer. I bought that 25. Those are so expensive, I never told you about it. Because they're just, the lady that died, they didn't make them. So how much was that big one? If you remember. 300, 250, 300, 4. They're so expensive. I use them for myself. I didn't tell you about it because you'd think I was selling you a box of sand. <laughs> right there is the only one still available. Let's discuss a polarizer. These are huge. I've used them every day of my life. Every single... Dylan, how to work on your broken leg. We, put the polar, we backed them in polarizers in the hospital when he backed his... When he, how many days did you take pain pills for a broken leg? Uh, 11. 11 days, broken in two spots. The pol polarizer will smoke an injury. Now this is important. Polarizers are the formulation of just the right kind of plants and mineral substances. It's full of, now this is patented around the world. It's full of Pacific sea kelp and volcanic ash. Kelp and ash. Tony has been shocked playing with the polarizers. For you, it pays to be a patient of DHS. If you want a demonstration of the polarizer, bring in a can of Coke. I hate to say that, but I'll show you how much they'll change a, can, a taste of a can of Coke. It will blow your mind how much it changes. Now, this is very important. I'm going to tell you something huge. 
Put your thinking caps on. Life on the planet, Nobel Prize winner Lawrence Bragg, life on the planet can be described as orientated to the right, and man is like a right-handed corkscrew. Any left-handed corkscrew orientation would be poisonous to him. A, Dr. Rubin states that a compound with the same formula can be poisoned if the polarization is to the left and non-poisonous if the polarization is to the right. Everything that God made in nature spins this way. Everything destructive spins that way. What way does a tornado spin north of the equator? Counterclockwise. Look at your blenders, counterclockwise. Look at your ceiling fan. I can make people go home by changing the direction of your ceiling fan. Clockwise, counterclockwise. I can draw energy out of the room. I can put energy into the room. Polarizers. Huge. Your body, when I hit a traumatic injury, it starts going in the other direction. I want to repolarize your injury back to the normal spin of life. The polarizer. I don't sell polarizers. I don't even like to talk about polarizers because I talked about it 20 years ago. Once. What do you think happened? In the middle of the day, the girls walked in and went, somebody from the blank, blank, blank is in your x-ray room and they want to talk to you. I walked in, had a badge flashed to me from a state agency asking about that. A real one, in the middle of my morning. I'll never forget that in the x-ray room. She looked just like Peggy Lipton from Mod Squad. <laughs> the state has been in my lectures. They might be out there right now watching. But you know something? I've done this for 40 years. I don't care anymore. I got a track record that nobody else has had. So I'm sharing with you before they squelch me any further. C substances would concentrate the cosmic particles. Kelp. Kelp cleaned up the Exxon Valdez spill. Kelp killed up the BP scale. There's so many cleaning things on this earth that clean up stuff. In the northern hemisphere, toxic substances and toxic vortices spin counterclockwise. All destructive forces spin counterclockwise north of the equator. Standard process has blenders that spin clockwise. Did you know that? Chris knows that. No, you kind of know that. It's very difficult to break something down. It's got to go this. Look at your blender when you get home. It doesn't work when it spins the right. It only works spinning to the left. How cool is that? Did you know that? Are you sure I'm the one doing all the Satan stuff? <laughs> I don't know. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Mary Lou, what do you think? Am I, am I doing OK? You sure? I didn't cross the line yet. I've been told my, for 40 years I'm all over that line. I don't know what in the heck these people are looking at. I think their brain was tangled up in Harry Potterville. <laughs> What's inside? It's patented. It will I polarize my shake every morning because anything in that shake that's chemically or man-made, I'm spinning that way. I'm changing the spin. It'll change it. I've got to be careful. I've got to visit. I'm not talking about this. I am not kidding. I got to visit. I'm, I'm keeping quiet. I don't want another visit. This time they might be so nice this time. Silent sound. What kind of quantum stuff have they done in the military? This one scares me right here. Silent sound. This is 1970s. What'd they do? Do you realize they used it in the Iraq war? Operation Desert Storm? They, brad, they broadcast an energy across the battlefield. They were surrendering in droves, almost too fast for us to keep up with. Two Iraqi majors, both brigade, brigade commanders who gave up their entire units. One of them gave up to an RPV. They were surrendering to little tractors on the ground. <laughs> little cars. They're following the car. These were the Republican Guard that were supposed to really give us what for. They played with their minds. They sent over a wave. You don't have a chance. And they sent it into their mind vague, confusing, and contradictory military or in, in, in information. Subliminally, a much more powerful technology was at work, a sophisticated electronic system to speak directly to the mind of the listener and to alter and entrain his brain waves. They were manipulating the brains of the soldiers, and they all surrendered. They used this in the Gulf War. And I think, what's your, 
I can't talk about that. <laughs> if you got into the cell phone stuff and things that could be put in carrier waves and driven into your head, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. I got enough trouble with the church people. I don't want to have the military people on my back. Sad. There's a subject I wanted to talk about. Man, I didn't know I could get through this much. I'm doing really good. We didn't think we'd get through this stuff. All right. Recess. Another recess. All right. There's a subject I wanted to talk about. I thought by now I'd be able to talk about, but I just can't. Because not enough stuff's come out yet. <clears throat> Maybe in the next couple of weeks, we might be talking about some different things. Anybody got the feeling things are going to change here pretty soon? How many people raise your hand if you think we're going to go into a, a poop storm? Oh, maybe a couple weeks. How many weeks? Two weeks? Two. How about the 11th? <laughs> Buckle up, folks. We're going to go into the craziest time. Huh? Ninth is first. 11th is the keeper. We're in 11th is the keeper. Let's discuss this. So, I'm sorry to do this to you. This was, I came to sell you nothing. No pills. I came to educate you with nothing else than educate you today. I have no motives, nothing. Expand your mind. Thank you for supporting DHS. We appreciate you guys. Tweet us, like us, get your pills, forget Bezos, and we'll continue to do this at least for the near future. Okay. I can't talk a lot of stuff, but I'm going to talk about this. I'm just going to read something, just so that you can kind of get the flavor of this, but society is decaying for a lot of reasons. There's major things happening in society that I can't talk about too much because I want to stay alive. <laughs> Katy Perry, way more popular than you might think. It tastes like pork, but a little bit stronger. Forbidden pleasures are always the most delicious, super healthy, and good for you. There are life-enhancing vitamins and minerals, and human flesh that you just can't get from animal meat. There's a group of old Hollywood guys who have an annual dinner party where the main dish is flesh. Katy Perry, French radio show, 2017. You have no clue what's going on out there. They've been doing this for centuries. 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 And what that does to human, I'm not talking about that until they catch them. And they haven't caught enough of them yet to talk about this. You know, thank God is a wonderful thing, but something happened in Italy that I want to just put up for the awake. If you're awake, this might mean something to you. If you're asleep, stay asleep, put your head down. <laughs> you know, I, I am not one that has been a big user of taking the Lord's name in vain. I've not, guys in hockey do this. I want to hit them with a stick because this is hockey. Don't swear like that when we're playing hockey. I don't think, I don't like to use the Lord's name in vain. But I am totally against a town in Italy, Rome, fining people for swearing. Do you understand what a slippery slope this is? The church and state starts getting together. Yeehaw. I told you a long time ago, a new world order is going to give you a new world religion. Watch my lectures for the clues. That kind of stuff is how it starts. Somebody's going to be making rules, and it ain't going to be you. I think the meat thing got him. <laughs> we want to send a message that incorrect behavior will no longer be tolerated. You better go to church when they tell you to go to church. You better behave when they tell you to behave because things are going to get creepy if you let this continue. Google, the quantum computer did in 3 minutes and 20 seconds what the world's fastest supercomputer did in 10,000 years. Hit it. Listen, you're still, I'm almost done. Mounted on the underside of this plate, we have the quantum processing chip itself. In essence, a quantum playground, you could say. Each qubit is a quantum object that we should be able to control at will. Thinking about it as the faster version of that PC over there would be a great slight to this. It, it can be much more than that. By using entangled qubits, 
quantum computers could tackle real-world problems that traditional computers simply can't cope with. You go to these restaurants to tell you how they got those PFAs and those Chipotle bowls I eat there. This is the stuff that you got the rest of your life. Liver, kidney, we're back to those PFAs and the bowls in the healthy restaurants just get you sick. It just gets better and better. Now listen, this is important. I'm getting near the end. I can't believe I got all through this stuff. This is very, God has fun with us, doesn't he? We think we're really smart, don't we? We think we're really smart. He comes along and just blows it all away. These are the smartest people. Listen to what they said, part of their conclusion. I still, I still get chills. I mean, I, when I realized what our team was able to do in this intellectual journey that stretches back to the early years of the 20th century, there's, there's hardly any room left for a kind of alternative Einstein-like explanation. We haven't ruled it out, but we've shoved it into such a tiny corner of the cosmos as to make it even more implausible for anything other than entanglement to explain our results. Accepting that entanglement is a part of the natural world around us has profound implications. It means we must accept that an action in one place can have an instant effect anywhere in the universe. Anywhere. As if there's no space between them. Or that particles only take on physical properties when we observe them. Or we must accept both. We're left with conclusions about the universe that make no sense whatsoever. Science is stepping outside of all of our boundaries of common sense. It's almost like being in Alice in Wonderland. Where everything is possible. We know nothing, absolutely nothing. Everything we thought we knew was just been thrown under the bus that we didn't know it. <clears throat> I put this up, energy for old people. CoQ, Biotic came up with the first CoQ10 in the market. I just put that up there. A big energy pill for old people. Oh look, that book is huge. When I steer stuff like this, there's new age stuff everywhere. There's guns that shoot people, and there's guns you protect yourself. If you're not smart enough to be able to read this book and filter it, don't read it. There's lots of things out there that you can read, and not everything you have to say and absorb. That's a fantastic book. Filter through it. If they talk about some spiritualistic stuff, try to be a man about it. Try to go past it. Realize they don't understand the big picture yet, and they're learning. Don't get in their face. That's an incredible book. I read that 25 years ago or 20 years ago because I wanted to know about stuff. Harry Potter did not hold my attention, ever. <laughs> Energy pills, simple stuff. Support your local businesses because it's Christmas time. Forget the big box store, support DHS, support the local guys, give these people a chance or I was gonna just walk away and start a different retirement life because I'm kind of tired, but you support this office, I'll stay here. Now, in conclusion, this is what made me like I am today. You are a quantum radiating, receiving generator. You send and receive information. You can be hacked from a distance. You can be tested from a distance. Your frequency's out there. Everybody can find it. They can reach it. They can, you're not supposed to know about this. Because if you knew about this, you are hackable. The field has been going on for hundreds of years that we started to understand. Men were in this area a long time ago, but they were squelched constantly. I've been in this field for 44 years now, and I've been fighting every step of the way. I've never had the wind at my back. With all the results I get worldwide, I still don't have the wind at my back. So next time you want to talk about the field, energy, stuff that you don't understand, it would be best to quiet down, listen to people smarter than you, before you spout off stuff you don't know. Have a wonderful Christmas. I hope I made you grow today. Thank you all for coming. Support DHS. We'll see you next time.
Bye.